Dwarf Man is an interactive adventure game designed by Dynamic Dimensions Development that was distributed directly on digital disc. It was released for Windows 3.1 in 1993. You might not have heard about this company before, nor this game, and we honestly don't blame you. Dynamic Dimensions Development, as far as we can tell, only created this one title. Beyond that, little is known about them. Morph Man is described as the first software to combine 3D animations for Windows. The first to use 3D Explode, Disintegrate, and Glow Effects. With the arrival of the CD-ROM format, game companies finally had access to a storage medium with tons of free space to do just about anything. Many developers of the era began producing what was referred to as rich media. It was heralded as a movement to greatly surpass what came before it. This could include full motion video, sharper visuals, high quality audio, it was a gift and new types of interactivity. You know, like Spider-Man in the Sinister Six. My spider sense is tingling. So, so much rich, 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 rich content. content. In 1993, I can see how something as simple as a glow effect could be considered revolutionary. Nowadays, though, heck, even our editing software can add a glow to things. Oh gosh, we're going nuclear! <laughs> exactly did a game this revolutionary go under most people's radars for so long? What does it play like? What is it about? It sounds like we need to boot up our old Windows machine because it's morphin' time with Morph Man. We begin with exciting 3D titles flying at the screen. And suddenly... <clears throat> That's not... Wait, is that? Ronald McDonald rendered right there before our very eyes. Got the big golden arches and everything. Da -na 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 -na. I'm morphing it. Holy crap, what's happening? He's morphing into a jet fighter. If you were to morph a human being into an aircraft, how would you envision the morph going? Maybe the wings would be his arms? Maybe the nose would be his face? Instead though, his body's morphed with his left leg becoming a wing, his right leg becoming the nose, and this little dangly thing sticking out between his legs. What's that? I think it's called the canard? Oh yeah, it's his canard all right. Don't be gross. The jet transports itself from space into the sky. How? What? Screw it! Morph Man's on some kind of intense mission. Action! Adventure! Wind. I think I heard a cloud sigh in the distance. <laughs> For your viewing pleasure, we've actually zoomed in this video. Because in reality, the game looks like this. Okay, so everything is played through this one box right here. All of it done with full motion video, while the rest of these empty gray boxes do something? Eventually? But wait, look below the video. We've got subtitles. Did we accidentally toggle off the voiceover? I mean, this is a rich media experience, right? It has glow effects, people. Glow effects! <laughs> nope, zilch, no voice acting. So put on your fancy reading glasses and do your absolute best to imagine what someone that looks like this probably sounds like. Great camera on this jet. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's probably accurate. Right. So, where's this castle? Oh, for crying out loud! This guy takes forever to get to his next line. I'm sorry, fellas. I have a bad sense of... Is he... Did he finish... Climbing! Ah, ah. What was he even talking about? What castle? Why did he turn into a jet? What is going on? Maybe Morph Man will explain. Please take it away, Mr. Morph. Thank you. Let's have a closer look. Place. 20, 20 seconds. seconds. That was 20 seconds of silence. A third of a minute for five words. Yahoo! Haven't seen any defenses. Spoke too soon. Missed. Yikes. M Morph Man?
I think he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so we lost? Is the video restarting? From the beginning? Oh no, does that mean- So, where's this castle? <sighs> you gotta watch all the titles, all that boring flying again, and get this, you can't skip anything. Wait, what did we even do wrong? Was there gameplay there that we missed? I think something was happening in the lower part of the screen that we didn't catch. When you start the game, there is no main menu, no options, nothing. It begins directly on this HUD. Uh, let's get back to that turret section from before. Oh wait, stop. Look, seems like Morpho has a couple of options to choose from. Is there a don't take a rocket to the face button? Maybe, but which is it? Circle? The up directional arrow? What do these buttons mean? Let's just push circle. So, where's this castle? I have never wanted to kill a game character so much in my entire life. Fine, let's rewatch everything and try what I'm assuming is up. Oh look, he ejected from the jet. You're telling me, in its first interactive element, the stupid game gives you two buttons to choose from and one of them does absolutely nothing? Why even design that button? Why show it? What was the purpose of that button? Oh, that, that's confusing, but hold up. Did Morph Man eject from the jet? I thought his body was the jet. What blew up? H how did he eject from his own body? What happened is Canard. Hope the jet was insured. Oh great, he's still alive. Let's watch and see what happens next. Whee! Good view. Time to get serious. What? Damn sh is. Help! An eagle. If I can just sample him. Here he go, here he go. He won't stay put. <laughs> there. Got him. Got him off fast. I'm an eagle. Time out. Let's recap. Morph Man's jet body horror thing happened where he ejected from himself. While falling, he manifested a parachute from his own anatomy. Which failed, meaning he purposely morphed a faulty parachute, again, a part of his physique, which proceeded to fly away. Damn sh Morphman then screamed for help, to which an eagle promptly responded. He shined a light ray straight into the eagle's face while both characters' animations locked and rotated in free fall. I'm an eagle! Bam! Morphman's an eagle. Huh. Couldn't he have just turned back into a jet? What? is anything. What is going on in this game? Okay, clearly this title isn't going out of its way to explain its main character's abilities or the narrative. Maybe the back of the box has some clues? Oh, it sure does. According to this, a world-renowned scientist, Professor Roberts, was kidnapped by villains. They're experimenting with genetic mutations, robotics, as well as chemical and biological weapons. Sounds fun. Morphman's job is to rescue the professor and blow up the research facility at all costs. He does this by using using a special molecular sampler. This gives Morph Man the ability to alter his structure and objects around him to transform into a variety of things to help on the mission. So the back of the box admits that Morph Man basically chucked away pieces of his body when he jumped out of the jet and lost his parachute? <laughs> So now we have the story and we understand the gameplay. Push random buttons to progress this incredible narrative. I'm an eagle! But how much more game could there possibly be? It feels like we've been playing this for hours. <laughs> ah! Okay, so Morph Man is an eagle. I'm an eagle! He uses his ability to safely land on the ground and turn back into a human. That shot at me? <clears throat> so, where's this castle? No, that did not just happen. We've got to start from the beginning again. Where? Where were the action choice buttons? Did you see them? Let's rewatch that sequence one more time. 
No way. That was barely two seconds. And just to mess with you, it's the same buttons as last time, but in the opposite order. Okay, well, obviously we can't eject again because he's a human. Unless Morph Man ejects a smaller Morph Man from Morph Man. <laughs> no, no, that's stupid. Just push the circle. So, where's this castle? <laughs> no. No, I can't. I can't do this anymore. Okay, so apparently you had to push the eject button. Only it's not eject anymore because these buttons can mean anything at any time for any reason. Do not expect to learn this interface. Oh, here, look. The buttons have changed again and now the symbols are different than they were before. So I guess we can't rely on ejecting out of every situation. But wow, I can't even begin to understand what these buttons and their symbols mean. Okay, Morph Man needs to find a way to get across this moat in front of the castle. I think we're supposed to sample this fish here. Oh, but don't hesitate. <laughs> what? Morphman automatically sampled that eagle while we were free falling. We didn't have to push a button. I'm an eagle! But now, suddenly, we have to push a button? This game's totally inconsistent. We sample the fish and... Graceful. Beautiful. Once submerged, we're given an underwater maze with no clue as to which direction to head. Oh, and if you don't react in just the right way, your lunch. If you're lucky and incredibly patient, Morph Man will awkwardly flop his fishy body out into an underwater cave. Here, we sample a bat. As a fish, you also have access to a forest, which doesn't make sense geographically when you consider the moat we saw from the sky earlier, but when you're a fast food clown sampling huge insects to morph into at your leisure, why ask questions? And yes, throughout this experience, you're forced to sample creatures. Failure to do so results in Morph Man's untimely death. Like here. Beautiful. Mm, glorious. It's so good. After we finish sampling the local wildlife and warm our way through the rest of the moat maze, we finally make it into the castle through some sort of well. Oh, look, a puppy. Cool. Looks like our window for action choice has gone down from two seconds to one. When you do make the right choice, Fishy Morph Man squirts the Robo Dog with questionable yellow liquid. Huzzah! Morph Man in the house. But look, another dog bot. He seems to be shooting lasers from his, uh, canard. Someone designed a robo dog that pees lasers. Pull that one over. Apparently, Morph Man doesn't need to give it a second thought. He immediately samples PP Laser Dog. Morph Man takes out a few more robo dogs with his not penis laser. We keep moseying along, and it's at this point that we're starting to get a clearer picture of what's going on in this game. Yeah, remember when we were talking about rich media and the opportunities that CD-ROM technology afforded designers? Well, here it is, 1993. They were working with a storage medium with tons of space. But instead of designing a game that leveraged CD-ROM technology to make interesting gameplay, the developers of Morph Man decided to create incredibly drawn out animations that feel like they're included just because they had the space Space to do so. Other games would typically just utilize cuts from one section to the next in a logical way to keep the action moving, but no, here we get this. I better keep moving! Ouch! That wood is hard! I'll try this door! An elevator! In I go! Going down! Bit dark in here! 
Seriously, we don't need to see every footstep our character takes. Also, we don't need Morph Man describing every little detail. The wood is hard? Gosh, thanks, Morph Man. Did you also know that water's wet? Riveting, I know. Maybe, maybe this step-by-step -step approach would be okay if the visuals offered something engaging, but in most instances, you won't see much. Barely any setting decoration, let alone actual points of interest. This is the same year we got missed. And when you see these games side by side, Mist feels like it's from the freaking future. Anyway, after descending into the depths of the castle, we make our way to some kind of robo dog factory. Morph Man takes out the machinery constructing the metal pooches, and we get more classic dialogue like ha! and Double ha! better keep moving, and we should keep our eyes peeled. Who knows what else could be lurking down here? The guy's got gas? What? what? Oh yeah, okay, sure, why not? Uh, that would explain it. Yeah, the industrial airtight door. There was a gas man. <laughs> ah, but how does one do battle with that which is neither solid nor liquid? Laser. Creative. So far, laser has been the solution to a lot of Morph Man's issues. Laser. 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 Oh, look. Another airtight door. It's opening all on its own to reveal... A dead skeleton thing. You think anyone proofread the script for this game? Act scared. At this point, I'd be surprised if gerbils and tiny typewriters weren't involved. Morph Man decides to sample a skeleton. Because f Why not? Our HUD is now filled with morphables, but none of these icons matter because you can't actually interact with them. Yes, you're given a morph button at certain times in the game, but our hero simply morphs into whatever the devs choose him to be in a specific situation. Yep, you never get to choose what Morph Morph Man morphs into in the morphing game Morph Man. It's just gerbils all the way down. The next section of the game is another maze. Unlike the fishy labyrinth mode earlier, which you could stumble your way through, this section is designed specifically to waste your time. Here's how it works. Morph Man is presented with two levers. Choose the left arrow icon or the right. No, there are no clues as to what the correct lever could be. You're just as well off flipping a coin. Either you are correct or this happens. No! Try it again. If you choose correctly, hooray! You're rewarded with Morph Man's painfully stiff walk cycle to the next section, where... Morph Man is presented again with two levers. Deja vu! Flip a coin! Either you're correct, or this happens. No! By the way, if you fail here and didn't save before making your decision, you get to start the maze all over again right from the start. Hope you're memorizing correct lever pulls. If Morph Man didn't tumble through a trap door on his second lever decision, look. They've recycled his hallway strut. And at the end, Morph Man is presented with two levers. Are you kidding me? How many times are they going to reuse the same assets? About a half dozen times. With a 50% risk of failing every time you come to a new set of levers, you're gonna be seeing these halls a lot. At the end of the coin flip lever challenge, even Morph Man is sick of this crap. Hope this is the end. In the next room, Morph Man encounters a tube. Gas is in the tube! Making a gas man, I bet! Without prompt, Morph Man automatically lasers it. Wait a second, let's watch that again. Okay, yep, yeah, just as I thought, they totally ripped off the D res sound from the movie Tron. I don't know what's more amazing, the fact that they thought they could get away with this, or that you've watched Tron enough to catch a single three second sound effect. Both leave me feeling equally hollow, honestly. Moving on, Morph Man finds another factory where naked putty people are de-skinned and turned into skeletons. But look out, some of these skeletons have swords, and when they ever so lightly graze our hero, 
You'd think that Morph Man would just laser these bony minions to dust, like he's lasered just about every bad dude up until this point, but we're not given the option. And that's because, as we all know, the only way to defeat a skeleton with a sword is to become a skeleton with a sword. On guard. No, no, hold on. What? What's wrong? When Morph Man sampled the skeletons earlier, that skeleton didn't have a sword. Axe scared. So why is he able to morph an unsampled sword? Why not just morph a sword into his hand? Why become a skeleton? Surely Morph Man would prefer to have freaking eyes while taking part in combat that heavily relies on hand-eye coordination. Maybe skeletons are immune to stabs? <laughs> Skeletons, Skeletons aren't immune, immune to stabs. stabs. Sadly, you need to perfectly dodge and parry by clicking buttons that mean nothing to the player. More super quick trial and error. With the skeletons finally wiped out, it's on to another elevator. Down again! When the thing stops, we're given two options to choose from. But before we can do anything... <sighs> Wait, this game has a freaking minotaur? And they didn't include it in the maze. Busting cliches over here. Let's see how this plays out. Okay. Excuse me, uh, Morph Man the game? Hi, I'm Logic. Uh, can I interest you in physics, character animations, or uh, any semblance of quality? Nah, I'm good. If you react properly at the elevator, Morph Man rushes into the Minotaur's chamber and you're given another split-second choice. Surprise! We didn't make it the first time. <laughs> Later, we attempt to use Morph Man's one-and-done attack laser. You know, the thing that's worked every single time? Well, the Minotaur doesn't like this. This game's kind of growing on me. No, no. Lasers alone can't defeat the Minotaur. That would be ludicrous. Instead, Morph Man uses his fantastic powers to morph into a robo-dog and take out the Minotaur. With lasers! Brilliant! Brilliant! Now, Morph Man takes out an ant, morphs into an ant, and skitters out into a nearby tunnel. This is a maze, isn't it? Uh-huh. Oh, canards. Lots of guessing and deaths to be had here. Plenty of ant butt. Plenty of ant butt. Eventually, Morph Man is home free. Good to be out of Antville. He swoops back into his humanoid self and comes across a massive hole. Look, it's where the creators of Morph Man toss their budget. Let's try jumping over it. Well, that didn't work out. Guess it's time to press the generic morph button and see what happens. He's a bat, man. No, he's not. That's me. I'm a Batman. Great. It's on to another maze, fluttering around as a bat. This maze can become an endless loop if you don't continue to hit the right direction. Look at this. Nothing says compelling superhero action like poorly rendered colonoscopy footage. You know the drill by now. Hit the right directional cues at the right time, and Morph Man eventually finds his way out. After turning back into human form, we confront a machine making rock people. Take too long, you get rocked. Ah! Pew, pew. Boom goes the rock machine. Later, we find train tracks and more critters. Stones shall not hurt me? And you gotta fight the urge to think with lasers on this one. Turns out Morph Man has to take advantage of a nearby rocket. As you'd expect, Morph Man has a random chance as to which button is the correct one to push. But that's not our biggest gripe here. Holy crap! Did Morph Man just turn into a giant? His hand's the size of a single button one moment. The next, he can easily straddle an entire freaking <clears throat> rocket. Step aside, boys! We died a lot in this game, and it taught us one important truth. Never choose the circle. It will always kill you. It is never, and will never be, the circle. 
So we select the not circle option, and Morph Man somersaults away from the jetting rocket, and we finally meet up with Professor Robertson. Hi, Professor! Great, time to break the prof free and get the heck away from this nightmare island. You think we're basically done heroing at this point, but Morph Man can still die in surprisingly eclectic ways here. Like by blowing up a rocket in the room. or accidentally falling out of a hole in the wall. But come on, we all know there's only one way to kick rocks and morph, man. It's morphing time. I'm an eagle. Wonderful, and there we have it. Time to sit back and take in this ending. they're heading to the Shire or something. You might think we pause the video here, but no, this is the end of the game. The screen locks up and it doesn't feature any credits or anything. Now that's quality. Look, by today's standards, we might consider the animations in this game super primitive, but honestly, this was probably a very difficult project to pull off using the tools and techniques at the time. For 1993, they made decent use of computer generated graphics. But in the end, we're not just watching a CG movie here, we're playing a game. A game that offers a useless HUD, frustrating action choices, horrific writing, and dozens of other issues. Let's face it, as an interactive experience, we don't need to use the almighty power of Morph to come to one unchangeable conclusion. It's just 